Delighted to be here and uh, particularly delighted to be in interaction with Branco. And I'd like to take this opportunity to give you a sneak preview of a big study that we are doing that is highly complementary with the research that uh, Branco has um, just uh, um, told us about. Um, and the basic idea is this, that inequality per se is not necessarily a problem, as we know from countless social psychology and other experiments and field studies, because it can provide um, an incentive to do more. Suppose you lived in a society where you could not better yourself no matter what you did, uh, that would be a society that uh, lacked life. The problem of inequality is when it is combined with a lack of agency, where you feel that uh, you are not able to improve yourself through your own efforts, and the system is unfair because it prevents equality of opportunity. And um, therefore, and in addition, inequality is a big problem if you lack solidarity, which is um, inward solidarity is other people you can count on in times of trouble. Uh, and um, in fact, if one looks at agency, solidarity, um, material well-being, um, in, and includes also environmental sustainability, you've got four major drivers of human flourishing. And so what we did is, uh, for 160 countries, look, got gathered data on S, A, G, and E, S being solidarity, A being agency, G is material gain, and E is environmental sustainability, and looked at uh, the picture. Now, that's not what I'm going to tell you about, because I'm going to tell you about the distributions of these things. Like you have a distribution of income, you can have a distribution of solidarity, a distribution of agency, and then you can look at the relation between the solidarity and agency distribution relative to the income distribution and see whether a lack of income is associated with a lack of agency. And if it is, then we are in trouble. Um, if not, uh, then... Uh, uh, to say that inequality is the same as inequity would be a mistake. So SAGE, um, and it can be measured in a variety of ways, and here's... Uh, so what are the results? And I've got very little time, so I'll just spring right to the results. If you look at the solidarity distribution, you find that there is deep solidarity poverty, which means that the bottom decile in the solidarity distribution is way lower than the rest of the deciles further up. Um, and there is a leveling off um, of solidarity that occurs. And I've just used the G20 um, uh, countries uh, and um, in the upper half of the distribution, solidarity is level off. And you can see for the G20 countries, um, uh, this, the bottom decile for most of these countries looks very far down relative to the rest. And then there seems to be a leveling off for a lot of countries. Um, and um, with regard to, whoops, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and then with regards to uh, the combination of income and solidarity um, uh, poverty, we find that the income poorest are indeed also solidarity poorest. So if you have low income, you have few people who can help you um, in times of trouble. Um, and income and solidarity move up in the bottom half of the income distribution. So the more income you get, the more solidarity, the more support you have um, for uh, about half the countries. Um, and uh, this is how it looks. You can see that uh, you've got um, uh, income uh, deciles on the bottom, and then solidarity on the vertical axis. 
and you can see that as income rises, um, your solidarity goes uh, goes goes up, uh, and um, the um, bandwidths um, are the difference between the highest and the lowest. So you can see the uh, statistical significance there for um, different uh, countries. Um, agency. Agency is exactly the uh, same thing as solidarity. If you are agency poor, um, that is, you don't have the wherewithal to raise yourself, um, then you will also tend to be income poor. The income poor are agency poor, but there is no gradual leveling off as you have with solidarity in most of the G20 countries. And if you look at uh, the graphs here, you can see that um, as uh, uh, for the bottom decile of income, um, agency is very low um, and then, uh, then rises um, for various G20 countries. And there's no, no uh, clear leveling off. Now, with regard to um, the people who are income poor also tend to be agency poor. And therefore, Right-wing people like Rishi Sunak um, in Great Britain who said the way to solve the British inflation problem is to reduce unemployment benefits because that will force the unemployed into work and that will reduce wages and that will reduce prices. That is false um, for uh, the simple reason that the people who are poor lack the agency. They don't um, have the means to improve um, themselves. And therefore, it is circumstances. So for two-thirds of the G20 countries, this is in fact the case, not for all. And the income agency uh, move together in the top half of the income distribution, not the bottom half. And you can see the countries for which this holds are Australia, Canada, France, Germany, um, Italy, um, Japan, India, Russia, South Africa, South Korea, UK, and US. And here you can see what the distributions look like for G20 um, countries. Basically, I think um, what we need to conclude is that these distributions of agency and solidarity are really important for us to be able to understand what the significance of uh, inequality and in income distribution is. It also is significant for our understanding of what the meaning of globalization and automization is. Globalization often means that um, people who are working just as hard as before all of a sudden lose their jobs because in some other part of the world there's some team that can do this at lower cost. And that reduces agency because you feel through your own efforts you can't uh, control your fate. Um, and it also reduces solidarity because in the Rust Belt and the States um, or in other parts of the world where all of a sudden um, global value chains have shifted out, communities can collapse. Automation can do exactly the same thing. And the interesting thing is that the standard economic statistics makes us blind to the costs of globalization and the costs of automation, which are there for everyone to be seen if we would take these new statistics into account. I'll stop there. Thank you very much.